All right, I'm here with uh, Coach Larry Lacewell, longtime Oklahoma assistant, Tennessee vol volunteer assistant, Arkansas State head coach, and director of scouting uh, operations for the Dallas Cowboys. Coach, in, in all your years as a, as a uh, assistant coach at uh, Oklahoma and some of the other schools, obviously you have some great recruiting stories. Kind of talk about your first, you know, your top two or three. Well, I really would start off with the number one. It, it's kind of a bizarre story, and it, it's concerned uh, three of the greatest players in the history of college football, and certainly at the University of Oklahoma, a group of family called the Selman Brothers. And I was recruiting, or I had looked at, the oldest one named uh, Lucius Selman. Well, Lucius was a short guy, about 5'9", 10", about 220. We couldn't figure out where he was going to play, and we didn't offer him a scholarship. And lo and behold, on sign, the day before signing day, we lost a couple of guys, they, a couple of Texans that we couldn't get. So I, I asked the head coach, I said, why don't we give that Selman brother a scholarship? I said, those other two brothers might be players. They were ninth graders. He said, go ahead. So I drive up in front of the house the day of the signing, the day before, not thinking anybody was there recruiting, you know. Lo and behold, there's Eddie Crowder, head coach at Colorado University there. I like to feign it. I go up on the doorstep, Eddie comes out, head coach of Colorado, and says, uh, Coach, uh, let me have a few more minutes with Lucius. And, and uh, he said, then you can come. And I said, okay, Coach, I'll be at Eddie's Cafe. Come by there and tell me, then I'll come out and see Lucius. Sure enough, he shows up about 15 minutes later at Edie's Cafe there in New Paul, Oklahoma. He said, I'm going to go back here on the phone and call him. I said, great. Well, he goes back on the phone. And he didn't know that I could get in the bathroom and I could hear every bit of his conversation. He proceeds to tell Lucius, I'm thrilled to death you're coming to Oklahoma, I mean to Colorado. You'll love it in Colorado. Now, they're going to try to tell you that it's going to be too far, that you're an Oklahoma boy, you should come to Oklahoma, that it's too cold, that your mother and daddy can't come to the game. So that, all they're going to do is sell those type things on you. But you got to do what you want to do. You love Colorado, that's where you ought to come to school. Well, he hung up the phone and I thought, man, I have my work cut out. I jump in the car, I drive out to the Selman home, I get the mom and the daddy and the, all three brothers in there sat down and I said, first of all, I want you to know it's my fault that we're recruiting you so late. It's not the head coaches, it's my fault. I'm mad enough to admit it. Uh, I shouldn't have done this. But I said, I know Colorado is off your scholarship. I know you're interested in Colorado. I said, as a matter of fact, I'll bet you, they're salesmen just like I'm selling, that he probably told you that I was going to say it's too far Colorado is. It's too cold in Colorado. It, uh, you're an Oklahoma boy. You should come here. I said, I know that's exactly what he said. Isn't that what the kind of things the guy said? Well, the more I talked and the more I told them what Eddie had said, their eyes got bigger than bigger. And I said, you got to understand, that we're all salesmen. And that Eddie Crowder is the biggest salesman of all. I'm just an honest guy, truthful guy, telling you the truth. And as a matter of fact, from here to Norman, Oklahoma, it's 99 miles. That is a fact, right, Miss Selma? And she said, you bet, coach. Hey, well anyway, long story, we got him. We got the two other ones. They were all three All-Americans. Uh, one is in the college in the Pro Hall of Fame today, Leroy Selma. And uh, that, that's one of the strangest, most fun stories uh, about a guy that uh, they all turn out to be great players. What about another one, Coach? Well, you know, there's all kind of, uh, of guys. A uh, uh, story I remember uh, better than any uh, had something to do with recruiting. And recently, for example, uh, people have seen the story of uh, Marcus Dupree on ESPN, the 3030 program where he quit OU and went home. Uh, I didn't recruit Marcus, but I did recruit a kid named Mike Thomas, who's the greatest player. Uh, in the state of Texas, or in the nation at that time. And uh, he had two brothers, had one at uh, uh, Houston and one at TCU, both pro, pro football players. But I recruited Mike, worked on him really, really hard. 
and uh, wasn't involved in cheating, but I think there were a few things going on. But anyhow, we brought him up there his freshman year, first time he carried the ball in school. Barry Switzer was an assistant coach. And Barry stayed on his rear end all the time, all the time. Kid had a hurt shoulder, and very unlike Switzer, uh, but he did. And they didn't like each other. So, the day Barry Switzer was named head coach, Mike Thomas quit and went to Greenville, Texas, where he's from. Well, immediately they called me from up in, uh, uh, out in Miami, Oklahoma, recruiting a junior college player. Immediately, I flew out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, to Greenville, Oklahoma, to try to get Mike Thomas to come back. Well, I couldn't get a rental car. I borrowed a friend of mine's car named Terry Stimbridge, who at that time was a big shot announcer for uh, San Antonio Spurs. I borrowed his car. I drive it over to uh, Greenville, Texas, and I look all over town for Mike Thomas. I finally found him about one o'clock in the morning. I get him in the house with mom and him. I talk him into coming back to uh, Oklahoma. Well, I'm not gonna risk uh, leaving him there. I couldn't get a car, so I had my buddy's car. He lived in Dallas. I took off in that car and I drove all the way Norman, Oklahoma, which might have been a little cheating back in those days, I'm not sure. I dropped Mike Thomas off in Green. Uh, I mean, in, in, in the dormitory in, in Norman, Oklahoma. Drop him off. Everybody's happy. Everybody's great. I had to turn around at four in the morning and drive my friend's car back to Dallas, Texas. I get him to Dallas, Texas. Give him his car. I get on a plane back to Oklahoma City. I get a buddy to pick me up. They drive me back to the dormitory, and guess what? Mike Thomas had quit again. He was gone. I never saw Mike Thomas again until he played pro football, and he was rookie of the year for the Washington Redskins. So at least I had good taste. But I did a lot of traveling that particular uh, two days. And didn't get the guy. Is there uh, another recruiting story off the top of your head that uh, you think's interesting? Well, uh, you know, we, we back in those days, uh, you could hide players out. You could uh, you could take them and put them different places. And uh, and I can't, you know, rather than just one particular instance, I can't tell you how many times that we would take players and you would sleep out in front of their house. Uh, you would take them and hide them in closets. You, you couldn't take them away from their uh, place. But uh, so many times, uh, I can't tell you how many times I slept out in front of houses or I hid in back bedrooms with the player, actually slept in the bed with him uh, till the time and the moment would go off where you could sign him up and you could get him, but it was, uh, the rules were far more flexible, flexible back then, and you could almost do anything, you call it cheating today. But, uh, you know, it, it was real war. I, uh, I have recently seen the, the SMU uh, a series where they uh, were banned from football and they had it on television. Well, I had to battle the SMU pony and all that. Those guys were uh, giving players $100 here, $100 there. So, uh, the Selmans, for example, came back from SMU and they'd got $300. And I immediately said, how much did you get? And they said, 300. And I said, is that all? I said, we'll give you a lot more than that at OU. And that's about wrapped it up. 